Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I thought I would do a graph editor video because I see a lot of the same questions popping up over and over again about the graph editor. And uh, I think there's some sort of hidden features that people maybe don't know about. So let's start off with a dynamic simulation just to give us something to animate and uh, or to manipulate in the graph editor, some animation. And instead of doing a bouncy ball by hand, I'll do a simulation because why not, right? So let's do a static rigid body on the floor there. And over here, let's make that bouncy and not so frictiony. And then on the ball, let's do an active rigid body, make that bouncy and not so frictiony. Whoops, more than that. 33, in fact, let's give it an impulse, maybe say 1.5 Newtons in the positive X, this direction, right? So we can get our little bouncy ball. Test that out. It looks good. It's bouncing, it's rolling, I like it. It's the best animation I've ever done. Okay, so let's cache this guy. One to one, zero to 150, sounds good. So now it's cached, blink of an eye, very fast nowadays. Um, there we go, I like it. However, you look at the mesh, there is no animation here, right? If I sort of hover over these guys, you'll see there's nothing green or red on those little buttons. So there's no animation, it's just a cached simulation. So I need to bake this down into animation if I'm gonna manipulate it. So I can go up here to the animate drop down, go to bake. And you'll see I've got my uh, keyframe range, same as my simulation, and then remove constraints. Now, we, we don't have any constraints on this simulation we just did, but if I had like a point constraint or say a rotation constraint, it's nice to remove those after you bake it. So it's got a nice little handy button there. Doesn't matter for us, I'm just gonna hit okay. And uh, you'll notice these are all red now, right? Because there's animation on those frames. Um, the timeline did not update. So I don't know if that's just a refresh issue or what. If I actually deselect the uh, ball, then reselect the ball, you'll see the timeline is updated. So it's just a refresh issue really. But there are keyframes on all those channels. In fact, if I press F7, bring up the graph editor, you'll see a bunch of keyframes. Now we don't need a bunch of these, all of these, right? So if I look at scale, all these scale channels, scale doesn't animate, it doesn't change. I don't need all these keyframes, right? So I can clean this up a bit. If I look at, I'm just gonna crawl through these. If I go rotation, here you see this sort of a choppy rotation curve. And this is pretty common when you bake simulations. And it's not just Moto, it's in Maya and other, thing, other programs as well you often get these sort of uh, choppy curves. So we'll fix that too. Uh, rotation Y does not change. Rotation X does not change. Position Z does not change. Position Y, there's our little bouncy bounce, right? And position X, is, that's our sort of flow to the, to the right as it's bouncing. So let's select all these channels that don't change. Boom, boom, boom. And let's clear them out all at once, right? So I can right click over here or I can right click over here. You can see they're selected by a little yellow. And I could just say clear, remove, all, right? Boom. So it just removes all those keys and goes back to the default values of zero and hundred, which is what we want. So those are gone. I still have my animation, right? Still going, looks good. I just don't have any keys on those channels. So those are cleaned up. One thing though, you will notice is that I still have dynamics active on these uh, two mesh items. So I'm gonna clear that out or remove dynamics before I keep going. So I don't accidentally mess that up later on. So up here in dynamics, I can say remove dynamics and that tab disappears. And I'll do that with the static uh, floor as well, even though we're not really doing anything with it. Remove dynamics. All right, so let's go back to this guy. Press F7, got my graph editor. Let's look at uh, rotation Z. So let's fix this. You know, one of the nice things about Moto is um, zoom and pan, all these controls that work in the 3D viewports also work in the 2D viewports, whether it's uh, UV view or graph editor or even dope sheet, I can do the same thing. Um, and also I can do the uh, shift A to zoom selected and A to zoom all, works in here as well. So I'm just gonna right uh, mouse drag or, right, or left mouse drag and grab all these. And now I want to middle mouse uh, drag. So if I, if I right mouse drag in the graph editor, I'm manipulating time, right? I'm changing the time values here. Um, undo, but if I middle mouse drag, I'm just doing value. And I can't screw this up, right? I can't accidentally shift these over because I'm just using middle mouse, it doesn't matter if I'm going left or right, I can only move them up and down. So let's get these kind of in order here, maybe down just a tad, looks good. Just uh, fixing the sort of choppy baking on the dynamics, which sometimes happens, looks good. And now I want to get this curve, reduce these even further. So we can do this manually. First, I'm just gonna clear, in fact, I'll just go like, uh, well, let's clear all these guys out, all these zeros out until we have that guy right there. And then I'm gonna clear out everything in between. But before I do that, I'm going to see this little cycle shadow button here. I'm going to create a shadow curve, which is basically sort of a um, copy this curve into a template. So press that, copy to shadow. 
And then when I clear these uh, keys out, you'll see it. If I hit delete, a couple things happen, right? You can see the shadow curve there now, that straight curve. Kind of hard to see, I guess, because it's blue, but it's there. And you'll also notice that my two keyframes went back to the default uh, flat tangents, which I have in my preferences for the default uh, keyframe interpolation in Moto. But all I have to do is just manipulate these handles to go back to um, get it back to where we were using this. This is a really easy one, obviously, because it's just kind of a linear motion, but it's maybe a little bit less. It's not quite exactly linear, but there we go. So now we're basically looking getting this curve to look like our shadow curve, which we have pretty good there, right? So it looks good. I can clear that shadow curve out. Boom. And now we just have two keyframes. So we're looking good. We're making progress. Um, position Y. I was going to skip that one from now. Okay, so before I go through the same process here, let me just show you a little trick. If I drag up my uh, command panel here, I can get to, I have some other options right here, and I have a command button. And here I can search through all the commands that exist within Moto, right? Hit F here for find, and then I'm gonna type in the word reduce. Whoops, reduce. And you'll see a command called channel key reduce. Um, this, I don't believe, is available anywhere else in the interface. Uh, if you look up here under animate, it's not here that I know of. I might be missing it someplace. In fact, I think it was an experimental feature that just still happens to be in Moto. So um, there's no options. If I click the little plus here, you'll see there's no arguments I can put in there. All I can do is run the command and see what it does. Then we'll do a shadow, copy to shadow, and then let's uh, run our channel key reduce, hit return. And do I see a shadow there if I move this? Yeah, I do. In fact, so it's basically, it's so close to the shadow, even down here, that you can't even see the shadow unless you miss it. So that really did a fantastic job of reducing those keys. Go over to Y and copy this to the shadow. And again, run this channel key reduce. And for whatever reason, it didn't really do anything. In fact, I'm not, it's not really helping me much here at the end. I don't really need that keyframe there. I can remove that. And, uh, but this isn't quite right if I look at the shadow there. So I'm gonna move that up. And so we're gonna have to deal with this one a little more uh, manually, right? So I think we're good with X, but let's deal with Y. Okay, I'm gonna start getting rid of some of these guys manually. I think I'll leave one at the bottom and one at the top on each of these uh, peaks and valleys here. Maybe something like this. I'll leave that guy. And then we'll do some uh, tangent editing. All right, looks good, I think so. Hit delete, boom, there's our shadow curve. So that's what we're gonna try and match. Um, quick tip, control and arrow key, control arrow keys will jump keyframes, right? This is super useful. If you don't use this, commit it to muscle memory because this is super useful. And of course, shift arrow keys goes frame. So frame is shift, right? Shift arrows and then control is uh, jumping keyframes. Um, you can also copy paste key. So I can select this, control C, copy, jump to this one, control V, paste, and, and just copy that value over really quickly. And okay, so let me pop back here. Um, and I'm going to do some tangent editing. So now what I need to do, of course, is, is right now these tangents are locked, right? So the weight, if I stretch it out, the weight is the length of these tangents. So the weight is going on uh, both of them. And if I change the curve, that's the uh, slope, right? So the slope and weight is locked. Undo that. Um, and I don't want them locked. So a couple things. Like this graph editor has all the same features as the one on the animate tab here. So we go over to animate tab and move this over here. Well, let me just kind of move it up like so. I'm just going to show this really quick because people get confused. But here I have all these value and slope um, breaking, and uh, I can break them and unify them. But I can break and unify the weight and slope up here as well if I sort of hover, break, slope, and weight. So it, you've get, you have more buttons down here. I can do it individually, and I can see some values and things like that. Um, but the same features are on this pop-up graph editor. Same thing with shadow, right? So I've got this uh, pop-up menu here. Here I've got all the buttons. So like linking keys, if you want to link like the transform channels together, you can move them around like that. That button's here too. So this this graph editor just has better buttons basically, like all these keys up here, cut, copy, paste, and uh, shift the scale and uh, time and, and value and scale the time and value, all these right here are right here. You just have nicer looking buttons. So, But I'm gonna stay on the setup tab just because I can actually scale, um, whoops, setup tab because I can scale this guy up a little bigger just for the purposes of the video so people can see everything. In fact, that's probably too big. 
Let's see our ball there. All right, looks good. Okay, so we want to break the slope and the weight. Boom, now I can adjust these individually, right? So I can match up to my shadow curve individually. Now holding shift you would think would constrain that um, tangent, but it doesn't. In fact, control, control does. My bad, control does. So control will constrain that tangent. I can't move it up and down, that's what I want. Boom. Okay, looking good. Gotta break this guy, I'm gonna break it. And looking good, looking not so great actually. That's kind of off a tad. So I can right mouse, remember right mouse is always time, left mouse is value. So I can right mouse time this over one if I want. Eh, that's too much. I think I will not do that. I think I'm just going to probably need another keyframe in this case, but I'll see if I can get away with it. No, it didn't look so bad. Whoops, let's break that sucker. Whoops. Here we go. All right, getting into the good enough for government work section of the video. All right, you get the idea. Looks pretty good, right? Not perfect, but pretty good. And if I play the animation, go back to zero and play this sucker, um, looks pretty much just like my original animation, right? Very little has changed, except I don't have two billion keyframes. So there I've successfully, I would say, reduced the keys at this point. All right, I'm in the Animate tab here. I'm going to wrap it up really quickly after we do some sort of gestural manipulation of keyframe time and value. Really quick, a keyboard shortcut I really like is Shift-Z. And you have to be in item mode, but Shift-Z will grab any animated items in the scene and load them in the graph editor. So if you have a scene with like a lot of items, maybe 20 items and only three are animated, just press Shift-Z, it's gonna grab all those animated items and throw them in the graph editor. editor. So it's really uh, it's really useful when you don't wanna sort of manually pick through everything. Um, also, if you just press Z, it's gonna select the animated channel. So scale's not animated, scale Z, but if I press Z, it's gonna grab just the animated channels here and, and select those. So those are useful uh, keyframe court shortcuts. Um, if you don't like to see all these other channels in here that aren't animated, not the transform channels, you can hide those right there. You can also hide the transform channels if you want, but you don't want to do that. And uh, I don't actually mind these, they're just like, it's like Google advertising to me, I just don't see them. <laughs> My brain totally spaces them out. Um, and it's nice to have them on, because oftentimes you're going to have visibility animated or say uh, uh, more for something like that. So I don't mind it, but if it bothers you, you can hide them. Uh, so again, Z is going to select those guys. So let's go into sort of manipulating all this stuff with gestures, which I really like, especially with the tablet. It's really a nice way to animate. So I have all these guys selected. Remember, right mouse is time. Right mouse is just shift time, right? I'm shifting the time. Control Z. I'm actually going to clear those shadow uh, curves there. Um, and then middle mouse is shifting value. So I'm just shifting it. I can't screw up the time. I can only. I don't have to have any keyboard modifiers. Just middle mouse value. Right mouse time, right? Z, Z, control Z, control Z to undo. Now I do have some modifier keys though. So if I want to sort of grab the time and manipulate it by pushing and, and pulling, I can do that with control and shift. So control right mouse, which is the one I always use, I can grab any of these keyframes, wherever I sort of place the mouse is where I'm gonna be scaling from. So I typically grab the end and I could squish it down, I could stretch it out. This is control right mouse, so super easy. This is how I usually um, manipulate, uh, retime things. So I would control right mouse, I may like zoom in a little bit, control right mouse, and get that down to 120, looks good. I could do it from both ends, control mouse, control right mouse, right, I could even do it from the middle if I want. Um, I'm gonna undo that, boom, 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 boom. And I can also shift right mouse, shift right mouse, instead of, unlike control, control is gonna let me pull from wherever the mouse is, Shift is gonna essentially keep that uh, stationary. It's gonna it's gonna push. I'm sorry, shift right mouse is gonna push, right? So it's sort of the opposite of control. I'm not grabbing that keyframe. I'm keeping it there. I'm just pushing everything else. Some people may like this. I prefer using control and dragging like that. So that's the way I like to do it. And it works with value too, right? So I can, if I just look at the Y here, this is why I sort of had this set up. If I wanna you know, adjust the height, of course I can just middle mouse drag, get the height adjusted and then sort of, you know, move these over a little bit to adjust them, make them nice. But I can also use control and shift middle mouse. So I can control middle mouse and it's gonna lock that last one there, but it's gonna pull all these other ones up. Or I can shift middle mouse, say I push down to push those up. So it's gonna lock where the mouse is essentially. So you can do it with value as well.
So it's a really nice sort of gesture-based um, interface for manipulating keys. Now you can also do it numerically if you want to be precise about it. So if I want to be precise about this and say move all these to the right to say 10 keyframes, I can do that over here with my shift uh, button. So shift is going to be time and value is going to be obviously value. So shift and um, I may want to say, let's say just 10, if I put in 10, it's gonna bump everything over 10 keyframes, right? Or 10 frames, see how it bumped it over? Control Z, if I wanted to be sort of absolute about it, say I want this guy on frame 60, I can go to shift and there's a couple ways I could do it. The easiest way is I just say 60, like that. Um, but I could do it here too, I could say absolute and it's gonna throw that on 60. Uh, what else do we have? I'm not gonna go through everything. Uh, value is kind of the same deal. Let me um, just grab the tops here and go to value. Let's say we've got set. So if I say one meter, it's gonna set all of these at one meter, but I can also add or multiply. Say I just wanna add like a couple centimeters um, to all of these, I can do that. And it's gonna bump everything up a couple centimeters. And I can also do a multiply. So let's say I want it twice as high, I could do times two, everything goes up by two. So that's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, and you can also scale the keys, and this one gets a little bit funny because, let me actually, this has a pop-up here, so invert we're not going to use, obviously you know what that does, but scale, it's a little weird, I don't like how they have this set up, but input means you're dealing with time, output means you're dealing with value, so why they didn't call this uh, time and value, I don't know, but here we're dealing with time, so if I say scale um, 50%, it's going to cut that time, and let me just actually undo the keys here, let me, uh, whoop, I don't have to do that, just press Z, right, it'll grab them for me, um, and then grab the uh, all the keyframes, and so, whoops, this last one here, what am I missing, A, we'll show them all, there we go, C, use your keyboard shortcuts, all right, scale, so, again, input's gonna deal with time, so I hit 50%, it's gonna, should go down to 75, boom, down at 75, um, control Z, undo, Scale again, if I go to output, we're dealing with value. So maybe let's just say rotation Z, if I wanna have that, I can go to, let me grab these two guys here and scale and I say output, now I'm dealing with value. So I wanna have this and say 50% and it's gonna move that down. So here I'm, here, so I didn't want that guy to go down. So I have to deal with my center options here. Let's turn that to end and I do 50% and I think this will come up. Yes, it did. So these are just some things you've got to deal with. Um, let's say if I control Z that, and let's see, what is this guy on? Negative 992. Let's make that an even minus 1000. Boom, boom, boom. Um, so it's a little esoteric, but you can figure this out. So if we do output, again, we're dealing with value. If I want to say center, it should be centering it at uh, 500 degrees, since that's 1000, that's zero. So if I do 50%, that should move down some and that should move up some, or I could be completely wrong. <laughs> I was right. So yeah, so that moves down and that moves up. So there's some there's some ways to manipulate these things uh, numerically. It's not super intuitive, but um, it's, it's worthwhile looking into these if you need to do some really precise tweaking. But in general, pressing Z to grab everything, I just like to do control and using the middle and um, right mouse buttons to adjust the animation that way in sort of an intuitive gesture away, right? That's it. I think we're done. There's lots more in the graph editor, but I think uh, I think that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, bye. Yum, yum!